This is Twit. This is, it was Apple's event, school yeah. event at Lane at the Lane Tech School in Chicago, one of the best uh, public schools in the world because they send more PhD, they, they, they don't graduate PhDs, but more PhDs come from Lane Tech than any other uh, high school in the nation. That's pretty impressive. Yes. Uh, and uh, Apple went there for a special event, which we stayed home for. Mm -hmm. But Renee Ritchie from uh, MacBreak Weekly was there. Andy Anako from MacBreak Weekly was there. Harry McCracken, a lot of people we know. And we were able to cover the uh, show from their live blog because Apple didn't stream it. There will be a video. In fact, by the time you see this, probably there'll be a video up you can watch. But I thought I'd play one of the videos that they played, not at the beginning. At the beginning, this Tim Cook was on stage. It was a really uh, an event celebrating education, and I liked that. I think uh, they really, uh, you know, a quote from Horace Mann at the beginning saying how important education is, and Apple really is is all behind that. A little disappointed by the actual announcements of the event. We'll get to that in a second. But here's uh, a video they made about one of the new tools called Homework. Settle, settle, please. Eyes up here. Eyes up here. We're not done. Group three. Let's have Ivy and Michael. They all have uh, Apple pencils. Ryan, Sally. And iPads. And Thomas. Oh, and they look Thomas, so unhappy. Your homework is to explore... Gravity. Okay. Um, don't forget, projects are due on Friday. He dropped a book, Friday, not an iPad. <laughs> yeah, that would be don't foolish. Don't forget your homework. Now they're using the Apple Pencil to do their project oh, homework about gravity. I hate you. <laughs> you stink. <laughs> I wish I could wash you away in the sink. You guys ready? <laughs> if only a hippo would smash you to bits. Okay, so he, they just threw a watermelon over a bridge. And they got a crap. video of it with their... And an egg. You're giving me fit. And then he licked the iPad. <laughs> I'd rather take baths with a man-eating shark or wrestle a lion alone in the dark, eat spinach in the liver, pet ten porcupines. All the kids are dropping. This is... <laughs> they're all dropping things off. Except for their iPads, which don't have cases on them and are making oh, me very nervous. very brave. <laughs> and the garage door opens and Dad comes home while they're using the garage as a studio. <laughs> Lots of pencil. My list. I don't know. I... I simply can't see why you even exist. Whose poem is this? This sounds like Shel Silverstein, maybe? Oh, maybe it is, yeah. It sounds, sounds like, like Shel Silverstein. It's not, of course, but it sounds like it. Well, some, they use like Maya Angelou and stuff. They, I mean, it might be. They have enough money to buy whoever's poem they want. I think Shell's gone. I don't think they have enough money to put Shell on. Pink. Well, with an Next actor up. reading it. Oh, yes. No, no, I, yes, I thought you meant the voice. Oh. <laughs> I hate you. Yeah, he passed away about 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of cool. I love it. It's showing kids using the uh, new iPad. So let's talk a little bit about what Apple announced today. First of all, put your disappointment hats on if you were looking for a new iPhone, a new I Macintosh. It was exactly what everybody kind of predicted, which is, they took the current low-end iPad, the $329 iPad, and they updated it so that you could use a pencil with it. That's nice. No smart connector, though, so no no keyboard, you know, except for Bluetooth keyboards. And they put an A10 Fusion chip in it, so it's not as fast as the current iPad Pros, but it is uh, a lot faster than the old $329 iPad. $299 for education. I'm a little disappointed they did not make a lower-cost education uh, model available. They did drop the price of the pencil, though, by $10 for education. $89. <laughs> and uh, there is a crayon, yeah, apparently. Yeah, from Logitech. Uh, it's $50. We don't know much about that. Is it? Is it? Does it take all the pencil... Capabilities and Logitech has a new eighty-nine dollar uh, case as well. I guess this is be more appealing to younger kids. Uh, I don't. I don't. Well, I would hope with the the crayon branding that it would be something that would be for younger kids, right? And not Ki just because younger kids are right. more likely to lose it. They mostly the announcement uh, though really was about new software, and there was a lot of it. For one thing, Apple is going to take the functionality into iBooks Author, which when we when it came out, whatever it was, eight years ago, five years ago. We were very excited about the potential for making a lot of interesting books and curricula, digital 
works of all kinds. And, and it didn't seem like it was widely adopted. But I think Apple's done something that will make it more appealing. They're updating the iWork suite, I, Pages, Numbers, um, Keynote. And they're going to add, uh, besides collaboration features to it, they're going to add all of the iBooks author's tools into Pages. So Pages is now the new iBooks author. And that actually makes more sense. Pages is the word processor part of iWork. iWork hasn't really been significantly updated in a long time. There's just been little patches here and there. So this is very good news for all of us because we all get iWork for free on our iPads. Uh, and uh, now we'll have a lot of new capabilities. And it's not just limited to educators. But I think educators may well be very interested. In fact, in that homework video, you saw kids, you know, drawing stuff about gravity and so forth. And my guess is that's in iWork, mm -hmm. that the presentation will end up in Keynote, that maybe they're using pages to do the presentations. And they're using uh, pencils. Uh, but I am I'm a little, uh, you know, oh, and they also announced a fourth new part of iWork, which is for the teacher, right? Mm -hmm. And I actually don't know the all the details on that one. I'm going to see Apple if I can. Teacher is what it's called. Apple Teacher. And it, it lets teachers keep track. Uh, we, you know, we're going to find out more as time goes by. But keep track of the class, uh, how kids are doing, what assignments, what apps they're using. Not just Apple apps, but third-party apps as well. Um, uh, give kids assignments. Probably, although we'll have to look and see. Let parents know what's going on. Apple was very clear right at, you know, at the beginning to say, and everything that goes on here is private. We don't know what you're doing with it. We can't see into it. Only the teachers and the kids can see into it. And that's, of course, very important to parents. In fact, there was a lot of to-do, hoorah, about Google's Chromebooks. Worried People were worried that the privacy uh, of a Chromebook wasn't great. At Google's step forward to change some things and to uh, reiterate others that it is private, that mm -hmm. this, Google doesn't have a view into any of the classroom stuff that you use with Google's. Uh, tools. But this is really Apple responding to Google, isn't it? Because Google is eating their lunch in the classroom right now. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, Google this morning, right before the Apple event, announced a new Chrome OS tablet from Acer that is roughly the same price and has Android as well as, uh, and of course, Google Classroom on it. Although uh, you pointed out, and I didn't realize this, you could use Google Classroom with a class and iPads. Yeah, you can use it on your iPhone. I mean, you can yeah. use it everywhere. I mean, so that's what that's what I use right, I'm using right now on my iPad. Okay. Um, so yeah, they, they announced that yesterday, the, um, the new, the, the new tablet. Uh, tablet, which was an interesting choice, I think, because one of my... Um, difficulties with using an iPad in the classroom is you need a separate keyboard. And so that's why I like Chromebooks. So a Chromebook tablet means you'll have to get a new keyboard. But as you said, that they're trying to get the price down. And right. that's why. Right. Of course, Apple has a class kit in iOS 11.3. We knew about this. This will be additional features that will apparently be make it easier for teachers to keep track of what's going on, to make assignments and so forth. Um, I'm just looking as we go through the notes because the, the event just ended before we went mm -hmm. on the air here. Um, yeah, it was, from what I could see on Twitter, it seemed uh, like there was a lot of flash, a lot of like, look what's amazing. And I don't know that that's what teachers want or need. Apple does sell the sizzle. For instance, they spent a long time talking about all the things you could do with augmented reality in an iPad. You know, you can look at rivers, you can see uh, pyramids, you can dissect travel. Dissect a frog. Dissect a frog without actually cutting into a frog using the Apple Pencil. To me, that kind of sizzle is nice. And I think there are plenty of teachers who understand that one way to grab kids is to have that kind of thing. But I also suspect school districts are looking for utility and value. Uh, they're looking for something that's robust, that won't break right away. Yeah, they're, I guarantee you that iPad in the, we saw in the uh, homework video would be encased in hard rubber <laughs> all around it if yeah. they really are giving those to kids. Yeah. And I worry about these pencils because it doesn't look like these are any different than the pencils that we currently use. By the way, it, apparently no new features either on the Apple mm -hmm. Pencil. Uh, and these things... Here's the video that they uh, showed of, of the pencil at work. These things uh, are easy to lose. Um, the, the caps especially are easy to lose. I, I don't know anybody who hasn't lost a cap or two mm -hmm. on the pencil. The nibs wear out fairly quickly. They're easy to unscrew accidentally and lose. Um, this is the kind of thing you want to give a very responsible child, but not the average eighth grader, if you ask me. Yeah, I think so. the education market is very, very difficult. The educational software market. Um, my husband is a teacher. He's been one for 20 years at least. He used to work in educational software for a short time during the dot-com boom, like for a, a tech company that was trying to tackle this. 
And he left because it is so hard. All school districts um, have different needs. The students have different difficult. needs. Yeah. The teachers have different needs. Right. And Some different of, interests. Yes. Some don't want technology in the right. classroom at all. And so I think that I've seen my uh, kids, you know, they've gone to the same, they, they went to the same school for many years. And I've seen teachers from when they were in kindergarten, now they're in seventh grade and ninth grade. I've seen teachers that were so like, I'm not even going to email you. I'm going to print everything out and, and give it to you at the end of the day because I'm not comfortable with email. I've seen them now get accustomed to the tools in Google Classroom. It's literally one click and you know all of here's what we did this week here's the questions you can ask your student about what we've been doing here are their grades here's what they need to work on and it's so easy so but then there are other teachers that are so familiar with this that you know this may or may not work for them it's tough i've watched the same thing happen with uh, moodle which is a very common popular and open source uh, classroom tool, which is now, I think, fairly outdated by Google Classroom and what Apple's offering here. But I've watched teachers who can use it and make amazing things and really do great stuff. And then I've watched many teachers just completely frustrated with it, feeling like it's too ugly, too difficult to use. And that's exactly mm -hmm. right. There, there really is a wide range of skills and interests in the education community. I don't think Apple selling the sizzle is necessarily very compelling. They also pointed out that this new A10 Fusion, which is really the old uh, iPad chip that's in the new iPads uh, the, is faster than any Chromebook. I, I don't know if that's compelling to teachers. Maybe it is to some science teacher who's having trouble getting a Chromebook to do what he wants to do because they're sim you know, she's simulating rocket launches. I don't know. I don't feel like speed or augmented reality is what most classrooms are looking for. You're right. Some would be. Mm -hmm. but, but I think that, I guess what I'm saying is I don't know how compelling what Apple said today is to the general education. Uh, it's exciting. I'm thrilled that Apple's supporting education. I would have liked to see more. I would have, for instance, Apple has a lot of cash. I would love to see Apple. And I think the shareholders would go for this, set up a fund for schools to support, to subsidize um, uh, iPad purchases in schools. Put, put a few hundred million aside. You can afford that. Yeah, I think they do some of that. I know they're working on getting Wi-Fi to schools that don't have um, Wi-Fi. Yeah, they I mean, have, this like, is a non-starter if you don't have ac yeah. internet access. Right. So one of the other things that I think was touted on Twitter by tech journalists was was every iPad, every classroom iPad gets 200 gigabytes of cloud storage per user. That was pretty good. I think well, that's exciting, isn't it? But it? Google gives you more. Unlimited. Yeah. If you have Google Classroom, unlimited storage yeah. forever. Although 200 gigabytes... Is unlimited. It's virtually unlimited, yeah. I should point out. It's a lot. Um, but so... <laughs> but it does feel like... It really does feel like Apple's holding back a little bit. Yeah. That they're not as... Je they're a little stingy. Right. Well, I, the, I, I'm, I talked to someone who works at Google Classroom. He's a salesperson, Mark Rene. He said I could say his name. He's not press trained, but he did say that he has worked at Microsoft before and working in education there too. And Microsoft tried to do that um, unlimited and they pulled back. I mean, Google just has a lot more storage yeah. than everyone else does. They can say, you know, unlimited and, and they can mean it.